Introvert's Guide to Making Friends Who Get You. Perfect for INFJ, INTJ, ISFJ, ISTJ, INFP. Finding your people is difficult in general, but it can be especially difficult if you are a solitary introvert. You will want more mates, but how do you find them? And how do you strike up a conversation with a complete stranger? Furthermore, introverts would rather stay at home and chill than go out and socialize most nights. Even when they are having a good time, people drain introverts. Introverts do not despise people. Rather, because of the way our brains are wired, we have little social capacity. In her novel, Introvert Power, Why Your Inner Life Is Your Hidden Strength, author Lori Helgo compares extroverts to hotels and introverts to luxury suites. Extroverts can handle a large number of passing connections, while introverts have fewer bookings. As a result, we're searching for mates that really get us. The overly chatty extrovert who goes out every weekend is unlikely to be an introvert's best friend. We're looking for people who appreciate our introversion, who can dive deep, and who can keep up with us. If you're an introvert who struggles to form meaningful friendships, and who isn't, here are nine suggestions. Before you go, please remember to subscribe if you want to see more videos on this subject. How introverts will find friends who understand them. 1. Consider the people you already meet. Do you want to expand your inner circle? You are not required to attend the nearest party or networking event. There are probably people in your life who you'd like to get to know better. Someone interesting, someone of similar interests. So, to begin, make a list of your acquaintances, that new coworker, a nice neighbor, or someone in your writer's group whose work you admire. Choose one or two of these people to contact. That takes me to the next level. 2. Take the initiative and make the first move. Many introverts, including myself, wait for someone to come to them. We may be concerned about rejection because we have had our fair share of uncomfortable experiences. What if I ask her for coffee and she declines? Worse still, what if he gets to know me better and doesn't like who I am? Even the most self-assured among us will experience self-doubt throughout the process of making new friends. And if you're an introvert who has faced serious rejection, as many of us have, you may want to give up. I learned a hard lesson in college about waiting for other people to come to me. Back at home, I felt at ease with my childhood friends, whom I'd known for the majority of my life. When I went away to college, I soon found myself isolated and lonely in a sea of strange faces. I looked around and wondered how everyone else had become so easily friends. Were they all reading from some friendship instruction manual that I don't have? After some thought, I realized that I always fail to make the first step. As an introvert, it just doesn't come naturally to me. Observation and contemplation are my strong suits, and I'm usually happy just doing my own thing. Making friends, on the other hand, does not normally just happen, unless an extrovert adopts me, but our aim here is to make like-minded friends. If I wanted to make new friends, I had to take initiative, even if it meant sometimes getting outside of my comfort zone. 3. Share a peek at your inner world. When meeting new people, you can feel compelled to appeal to everyone and win over any new person you encounter. This is particularly true for introverts who are sensitive and empathetic and can read people well. But this is where things can go wrong, it's like going up an escalator that's heading downwards, a lot of effort that won't get you anywhere. It's also exhausting. Truity's Molly Owens explains, too often, you reveal only the aspects of yourself that you believe the other person needs to see in order for that person to like you. Maintaining this facade is exhausting. It's likely that it'll make you wonder why you're in a relationship in the first place, because it's obviously draining all of your energy. So, when you meet people with whom you want to communicate, be bold and show them who you really are. Enable them to see into your inner introverted world. This is known as healthy vulnerability, and it can take the form of, I don't know about you, but I'm not a major party person. The worst kind of conversation is small talk. When I'm on video calls, I get really nervous. I really appreciate how you support me. Can I be completely honest? Right now, I'm feeling really awkward. I enjoy your company. When you share a glimpse of your inner world, you expose yourself, and this is how true intimacy is created. 4. Pose a question. When we meet new people, we must inevitably do what any introvert despises. Speak about ourselves. This is always enough to put a halt to a blossoming relationship. However, the topic does not have to be solely about you. Introverts have a superpower, they will listen. 
So, to get the other person to speak, ask them the following questions. What has been going on in your life recently? Can you tell me anything new you've heard recently? What would you do if you could have any job you wanted? How come? Listening removes the focus from you, and most non-introverts enjoy talking about their favorite subject, themselves. 5. Take note of how you are feeling. The most important thing in a relationship is how it makes you feel, not how similar you two seem on the surface or what others think. Introverts must be intentional in checking in with their feelings because they may get lost in all the other activity going on in their busy minds. So, consider this, is it true that I feel better after spending time with this person? Or am I so tired that I want to lock the door to my bedroom and rest for days? Can I be myself in front of this person? Can I put my faith in this person? Or do I feel compelled to watch what I say and do? Is this person respectful to me? Do they believe in me? It's normal for an introvert to feel exhausted after spending time with others, after all, peeling off the mask takes energy. But, in general, your friends can make you happy. Regrettably, this isn't always the case. Introverts in the Church by Adam S. McHugh explains, we are appealing to emotionally vulnerable people because introverts are usually strong listeners and, at the very least, have the impression of calmness. Introverts who are relieved that others are initiating contact with them can quickly become entangled in these stressful and unsatisfying relationships. Allow yourself to take a step back if anyone is a complete pain to be around. Another cause of fatigue in your life is the last thing you need. Furthermore, when you distance yourself from people and situations that aren't right for you, you make more time and resources available for those that are. 6. Determine their level of interest. You're not alone if you've ever wondered if anyone likes you. Introverts, and many others, suggest it's difficult to tell whether someone is into them, and not just being friendly. Here are some indications that the other person likes your company and may be interested in forming a friendship with you. Do they ask you personal questions, as if they want to get to know you better? Is it possible for a discussion to progress beyond small talk at any point? Do they owe you their undivided attention? Or are they constantly preoccupied with their phone? Do they share contact details and seem to be involved in making concrete arrangements to meet with you? If you answer no to these questions, this person is probably not a good friend choice. Try not to take it personally, I know, it's easier said than done. There are a variety of explanations why someone may not be right for you, and none of them have anything to do with you. 7. The awkwardness will fade with time. We all do it to some degree, but introverts do it even more. We keep our best selves hidden, our quirky, fun, one-of-a-kind personalities, and only reveal them when we feel genuinely at ease with others. Don't be too hard on yourself if meeting new people is uncomfortable at first. The more time you spend with them, the more at ease you'll be. 8. Create a friendship routine. Many introverts enjoy routine. So, ask your mates to meet up once a week at a set time. Every Saturday morning, have brunch, and every Tuesday after work, get coffee in the same park. We feel more at ease and waste less energy when we know what to expect. It also relieves the burden of coming up with something new and exciting to do each time you get together. 9. Move slowly. Genuine friendships take a long time to develop, Owens writes. If you follow tradition and start accumulating groupies, you will end up with a slew of superficial, unsatisfying relationships that will fail because they never had a strong foundation. So take it slowly and be gentle with yourself. Developing healthy, long-term relationships requires time and effort. You'll be happy you did in the end. What are your recommendations for making new friends? Please let me know in the comment section below. Please remember to like and subscribe for more videos from us.